again at the beginning. Oh backward, oh backward, oh Tom and it's flight, make me a child again just for the night. Oh backward, oh backward, Tom and it's flight, make me a child again just for the night. Oh backward, oh backward, hush. The babies are sleeping, the fishers and farmers, the cobblers and school teachers, the tradesmen and pensioners, the prostitutes, the preachers and the publicans, the web footed cockle women and the toddy wives. Young girls lie asleep, brides mated by glow worms in the old and turning wood. The boys are dreaming risky of the bucking ranches or glide on the jolly motherfucking rotted sea. Listen and you can hear him sleep. Or backward, oh backward, oh Tom and its flight. Make me a child again just for tonight. Oh backward, oh backward, oh Tom and its flight. Make me a child again just for tonight. I grew up on a gravel road on the side of a mountain in a continental house, which wasn't anything more than a double wide trailer built in a foundation. There were folks who lived there like the Pinguses, whose father worked for the railroad, and the Foxes, whose father was a coal miner with black lung already, and the Boguses, who were on welfare, and whose mother I caught peeing in the front yard one morning on my way to the bus. She didn't even acknowledge I caught her peeing in the front yard. She just went inside. There were the Angus, whose dad worked for the Fayette County Tree Company and had a bumper sticker that said, Earth first, we'll log the other planets next. <laughs> the Angus lived in this rundown house painted baby blue with a giant praying Jesus in the front yard. One night I was there and flipped the nightlight on and I saw cockroaches scurrying everywhere. I gave names to each of them, the poor little children. There was Derek, even though he was old, he saw his ride bikes with me. One day we got in our bikes and took off riding up towards the old water tower through the woods. We rode over paths one thin by deer and down logging roads and pop willies in the ruts made by the giant truck tires. We rode up the old mine shaft and back and then we rode towards the big mud hole and tried to jump it. I took my shirt off and let the mud splash up on my little boy belly and thought to myself, this is the place where you could ride your bike without your shirt on. This isn't a place like Michigan. Where I'd been the summer before at my Uncle Leslie's house, where all the kids gathered around and listened to me talk and started laughing. He's a hick. Listen to how he talks. He's a hick. He needs subtitles to understand him. I cried, not knowing what they meant, but this wasn't that place. This is a place where no one cared how to talk my country talk or spell my country words, because they talk country talk too. So I rode down the dirt road on a broken bike without my shirt on and fell down one of the part as I popped a kick ass wheelie in the air. And oh, if I could only tell you how beautiful it feels. Be a 12-year-old boy and wandered alone in this world and have your shirt off riding your bike in the mountains. After Ron and Derek and I went back to his house and watched his dad friend getting ready to skin a deer, deer was all hung up on the clothesline post with a telephone cord wrapped around its neck. Frank was there in front of us kids smoking his cigarettes and grinning a no-tooth grin. He had these light blue tattoos up and down his arms. I don't know if Frank had ever done Tama before, but I knew his brother had been shot robbing a store of my uncle. There was one of a giant blue jagged cross, death date of his mother, one of a naked woman with big old boobs. And then one on the forearm I couldn't quite read. But I guess he could tell I wanted to know what it said, so he just turned it over, traced the blue outline with his greasy green fingernail, and he let me look at it. It said, born to lose, aren't we all? Frank laughed as he smoked a cigarette, and turned around and gave skin on the deer. Should have seen this poor deer with his dead black eyes and his tongue sticking out of its mouth like it wasn't dead but drunk, or doing a funny deer face at least. Frank stood in front of us, took his hunting knife. He always kept on his belt and his hunting knife holster and started gutting it. Took the knife, put it in the crotch, started skinning up all through the stomach muscles all the way up to the rib cage of the deer. Took the knife, wiggled around, all the blood and guts started falling out of the dead deer going smack, smack, smack against the ground like wet rags. Frank had one of those watches with the elastic wristband you could slip on and off. He put down his knife and reached up into the deer carcass with both arms, pulling out parts until he was bloody up past the elbow. He reached up in the deer again when he pulled his arms out this time. His watch was missing. Frank laughed, reached up into the open deer cavity and felt around with his bloody arms and couldn't find a watch. He giggled and kept reaching inside the deer, feeling around inside the rib cage and looked down towards where all the intestines were at, but the watch wasn't there. He flicked a cigarette into the ground and said, maybe it's in the guts. Frank picked up a stick and started messing around with them as they steamed. He started stirring a stick around, there wasn't any watch. Derek and I bent down and looked through the deer guts too, there wasn't any watch. He checked the deer again, shook it all hollow on the clothes on. Nothing fell out, there wasn't any watch. Finished bushing the deer and filleting out the meat. There wasn't any watch. He even let the deer guts sit out for a couple more weeks. He let them rot, and there wasn't any watch. And even this day, 20 years later, the watch is still yet to be found. <laughs> that night I slept and dreamed a strange dream. I dreamed of birthdays, more birthdays, and sharing those birthdays with strangers. And sometimes before sleep, we rode up the pothole gravel road and then back on the muddy back roads. Jumped ramps to the dirt pile and then took off riding towards the water tower before the sun went down and Derek went inside. Sometimes I stayed out after the sun went down, the mountain sky became purple. I went to the side of the mountain road behind our house and plopped my bike down. There was an old hill there, clear cut and cleaned off by an old timber company. Made a nice place for sitting out and looking over the valley and rain out. I looked out over the continentals on the street below me and in these houses with people walking around and the lights they had just turned on. I sat and felt so lonely because I was only one person and I couldn't be each of them. 
I sat in the purple light, looked down to Kroger where the light was shining over right now, and listened to the coal trucks and the logging trucks zipping through town on Route 60. I thought, this is the place I'm from. This is a place like no other. There's an outer space Mars called Crapalachia. I looked up and I saw spaceships returning. I wished for a day when we would all create our own moment of birth, our own moment of bornness. I sat on the side of the hill surrounded by the mountains between the summer looked like they were made of cauliflower painted green, and in the winter were white with snow and dark purple and dull gray without. I sat and looked out over shining rain and I had no idea this was going to be the place where I found out what it was like to die. This is the place where all the joy of the world would come to me, where I'd fall in love with this life. I looked at the dark mountains and I heard my mother calling me home. Come home, Scott. Come home. And I asked myself a question I've been asking ever since but haven't been able to answer. I asked myself whether the mountains were just graves full of dead skeletons or whether they were pregnant bellies popping full of life. And sometimes I think to myself that the mountains look like graves. And then at other times I say, no, they're not graves. They're pregnant bellies full of babies waiting to be born. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> oh, backward, oh, backward, oh, time and its flight. Make me a child again just for tonight. Oh, backward, oh, backward, oh, time and its flight. Make me a child again just for tonight. Oh, backward, oh, backward, oh, time and its flight. Make us all children again just for tonight. Oh, backward, oh, backward, oh, time and its flight. Make us all children again just for tonight. Oh, backward, oh, backward. So October 10th, 2011, it is the night of our new birth. It is the night of our new birthday. It is the night we first met our true brothers and sisters. We knew them to be of our flesh. We knew them to be of our blood. This is our birthday song. <laughs> Happy birthday, little boys. Happy birthday, little girls. I have presents over there. I didn't bring them up. Presents for everyone. Let's come close now. Only you can hear the house sleeping in the streets and the slow back soft in the silent black bed tonight. Only you can hear the lovers and the come and the coming and the cane and come again. Only you can hear the teeth in glasses, the thou shalt nots on walls, and our yellow eyes looking at pictures of our dead. Only you can hear the countries and mazes, the face of a pretty girl, and the hands of a pretty girl, and the hair of a pretty girl, and the hair of a pretty boy. And the face of a pretty boy. And the night, and the light, and the light, and the night, and the no more nightmares come. And the light, and the now, and the light, and the light, and the light. The big sea of our dreams. Tonight we will see one another in our sleep. We will see our thousand birthdays together. I want us to return to this place a thousand years from now. On the same night. Alive and not dead. Alive and not dead. Alive and not dead. Alive and not dead. It will be so. So he was once. Leave you and me. We await the infusion of true strength. And in the armies of the windfall mind we will enter. Glory cities together at dawn. I want us all to be ready. Thank you very much. I'm ready. ready.